In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I do sky replacement to make your images stand out using Lightroom and Photoshop. Let's jump into it. What's going on everybody? In my last tutorial video, I covered how to edit your GoPro pictures. Click right here if you missed it and wanna check that out. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do sky replacement when your photos are completely blown out white like the picture I took while hiking the Grand Canyon. I'll place a link down in the description if you wanna go download the raw files so you can follow along with me as I edit the photo. If you have any questions throughout the video, please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Now let's jump over into Lightroom and Photoshop. Now we're over here in Lightroom and here's the photo we're gonna be working with today. It was a photo I took at the Grand Canyon about two years ago. This is shot off a Canon Power Shot. It's a little $200 handheld camera, probably cheaper now. Um, so there's no excuse of I do not have a DSLR or I can't shoot great photos off of this camera. You can shoot a great photo off of any camera and just get out there and keep shooting. I'll show you the possibilities with this. We're gonna replace the sky up here. It is completely blown out as you can see. So let's get started on some basic edits. We're gonna pull the highlights all the way down to negative 100. We'll pull the shadows all the way up to um, 100. And now we are going to go and mess with the whites and the blacks. Now when you're doing this, you can hold down the Alt key or the Control key, I believe, for Mac. And you can see what is blowing out by just dragging up. You see the whole sky is blown out and then you can see where the waterfall and everything else. So we're gonna back this way down until you just see a little bit of the sky blowing out. Just cause we're replacing it later or else you should not put anything blown out in the photo if you're gonna print it. So if now we're gonna mess with the blacks. We'll pull the blacks down. That'll be about right there. We're naturally contrasting, not just using the button. And we'll go about right there. And you can see in the backpack, there is a lot of distortion and we will get into that in just a minute. We'll bump up the clarity pretty good. I'd say we'll go about 67. It's not, yeah, 60, somewhere in there, 67. We'll bump up the vibrance. I'd probably say right around 57. And now you see how it's a little purplish magenta. This is kind of like a blue or teal. It's not, it was not like that when I shot it. It was very orange, it was the morning, we were hiking out. So now, I'll pull the saturation up just a little bit too. So now we are going to go in and we're going to brighten up the guy standing right here. I want him to stand out. See how he is, he, he just doesn't pop out of the screen. So we're gonna go into the brush tool really quick. And uh, I'm just going to paint right on him we'll turn on we'll bump up the exposure now so you can see what you're painting i'd say we'll go 95 right now we'll, we'll mess with it right after we're done so right here we'll go down into it there you go i'm doing this very quick or else i would zoom in and really get into it i try to make these as short as i possibly can brighten up some of the rocks and things around here so it doesn't look so unnatural there we go all right so now let's bring that exposure down a little bit to make it look more natural i would say about right there looks pretty good so this is the before and after using that brush tool to brighten it up it, it's a very it's a tremendous difference um now we're gonna go down into we'll go into detail really quick so you can see when we zoom in, I don't know if you can actually see, but there is a lot of noise and distortion here. So we're gonna sharpen it a little bit. We'll go up to about 50. And if you have seen my other videos, the my rule of thumb for this is whatever the amount of sharpening is, whatever your noise reduction is, it needs to equal 100. So if we're doing 50 on the sharpening, we're gonna do 50 on the noise reduction. Now that should smooth it out. See, there you go. That looks good. Now we're gonna do a little bit of masking. Same thing, hold the Alt or Control key, and you can see anything that is black is where sharpening will not affect at all. So I'm gonna drag it to about right there, probably like 38 or 40, somewhere in that range. 
and that looks good there so this is the before and the after it really helps a lot all right so here's the photo i'm gonna bump the exposure down one little notch after we did all of that there we go we can go back into it later so now we are going to jump over into photoshop which you can just right click um, edit in photoshop we're gonna go over here uh, you can choose whatever you want i'll just edit a copy there's the sky we'll be using in just a moment all right so now we're over in here so now this is where the fun begins uh, we're gonna duplicate this so it's not on a locked layer and so putting a sky in is pretty simple i included this file up there for you as well if you uh, decided to download the file to follow along with me we're gonna cut and paste this over here this is how I do my sky replacement you might know of another way this is just wor what works best for me okay, so right here transform it to fit the sky that you need it's not too big of an issue so I'd say about right there is where I'm going to want that it's gonna fit that whole area all right, so now we're going to take the little magic brush or the magic wand and we're going to select the sky where it's all whitened out. We'll go into here and we'll just cut this using control X and now it'll cut out the sky. Go back in. Here it is. Paste it and line it back up. And now it looks really jagged, but you see the sky is back in there. So now we will go up into image, adjustments, brightness, and contrast. And we're going to just kind of tweak with the sky to make it fit the exposure. And just make it look natural. You're going to have to kind of use your eye for this, especially when you're doing it in your own photos. Because you just, you don't want people's eyes to get attracted to it. You want it to fill in so they don't, it doesn't get attracted to the big white blob in the sky. I'd say about right there for right now. So that's it. That's after that. That was before the brightness and contrast, and that's now. So now we will do a little bit of blending. I like to just use the brush tool, create a new layer, put it to overlay, make sure your opacity is down. I like to have it around 15 to 20%, somewhere in there. I'm going to go about 18. And now we'll just select a white brush first I'm gonna bump this down now that's about good all right so now I would say we're gonna go in here um, to select hit control and click the actual layer I'm gonna select the sky and now I'm just gonna start painting a little bit of white down in here just to lighten this up a little bit along the rim if you notice a lot of photos they're not just completely contrasted around there it's not just so blue we want to go into it and brighten this up a little bit okay tone this way down to about seven and kind of go up in here a little bit that's looking good to me we'll go into some blacks really quick go all the way to black and really just touch the top turn my brush down just barely touch the top. Just a little bit. Hit that top and then kind of blend it in a little bit. Oh, wrong one. Keep that right there. I want to bump up my brush a little bit. There you go. I'd say about like that. So here's without the overlay and with the overlay. That looks pretty good to me. Once we get back into the other software, it's really going to pop. That looks great. Uh, let's see. So right here, without, with the sky, with the overlay. So now just to get it back over into Lightroom, you're going to just save it. It's probably going to take a minute, so I will be right back. All right, there I'm back. Now it should be transferred over into Lightroom, and here it is. So this is the before with the effects and the after with the sky, which it looks great. So now what we're going to do is right here the colors are not what they were when i took this photo it was very orange and i like warmer photos anyway 
So I'm gonna go into some split toning. If you've never done split toning, this is how I like to do it. I'll bump the saturation all the way up so you can see. I mean, of course it looks insane. But now I just drag it to where I want. See how it's starting to kind of become a little bit more natural? It's very saturated. But I'm probably gonna go right around 77 for this one. It's a little green, and now I'm gonna bump the saturation down, I'd say to about 48. 48 looks good. So look at that. It really brings down the magenta slash purple kind of look there for and after. And now we'll go into the shadows. And I would say probably around 55 to 60. I'll go 56. And then we'll bump that down. I'd say right around there. So this is the before and after with the split toning before and after I really like that a lot I'm actually probably gonna put a little bit more clarity into it now get a little bit more depth I love that that looks good bump the vibrance up a little bit more Let's say about right there that looks really good now we'll check the details one more time and make sure they're looking good and then we will put a little bit of vignette on it. Let's say about right there. And I think that's it. It looks really good. Maybe play with the exposure a little bit. Sometimes you want to, I'd say just go up with the exposure. That's just my preference. I would say, you know, when you're ever editing photos to get up and walk away sometimes, you come back, you'll always see more things that you want to change. And usually about two or three times doing this, walk away for five minutes, you'll come back and change it and you'll love it. So we'll jump over into the outro. This is how you do it. I'll show you the before and after really fast. Here's the before when we first started. And here is the after now. Before, after, before, after. Thanks for watching everybody and make sure to click that subscribe button to be notified on my future video releases. Please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family if you liked it and found it helpful. It really helps me to be able to keep doing these videos. If you have any questions or want to see a specific tutorial, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you or maybe cover it in my future videos. Connect with me on my social media. My links are down in the description. Dream it, create it, and strive for it, and I will see you next time.